What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. Welcome to Mind Money Method episode number five. Um, I'm Swing Pony. I'm your host. And we have an awesome guest coming on in just a little bit. Her name is Brittany Marie. You might know her as the Stock Queen. And we are covering some topics that I am super excited about and a lot of people have requested. So stay tuned. We're going to tap into your mind, get some new tips and techniques, and drive into the new Monday with some fresh knowledge. We'll see you here in a bit. Hello, hello. Is it Monday morning yet? That is the weekend sentiment. It was so funny before trading and I actually like fully enjoyed my weekends. Now everyone's like, is it Monday? We love Mondays now. Um, let's go with Britt. Got a little rooting for our guest that's gonna come join us on later today. Colleen, good to see you. Been seeing you quite a bit lately. Great to see familiar faces in here. Duff Todd, fire, we try to bring the fire. Um, we have a really, really good show ahead. I'm going to bring Brittany on in just a little bit. There are some topics that we're going to discuss that I think have been really relatable and asked for by a lot of people. Um, one of which is going to be tips for trading while working full time. Personally, I work full time, so that's something I'm very interested in as well. It's always a bit of a delicate balancing act. And then we're going to dive into two of her very specific swing trading strategies which are really creative and smart. I think it's good to have things in your back pocket, how to screen for stocks, and also how to hedge your portfolio with spikes. Um, before we jump on all of that, I do wanna to touch on our last episode where we had Shark Trader on because a lot of what we discussed, like the trading psychology, mindset, mentality, kind of been dropping the ball on. I had to, you know, have a bit of a come to Jesus, like an honest moment after that conversation. And I realized, you know, I am not getting enough sleep. I'm not as active as I used to be. I'm a bit spread thin and just distracted. And so last week, I definitely took a little bit of a step back from trading. And I tried to, you know, get better on the things that are affecting my mindset because I've been really distracted. I've been, I've been half-assing it a little bit. And so if we're going to talk about it, we're going to be about it. We're going to get back to our sleep or health, get all that in check, and then we can tackle trading. <gasps> Miss Izzy. Yay, we have Miss Izzy here. Um, love seeing other female traders on. I am excited to have Miss Brittany here because Miss Brittany and Miss Izzy, I just combined you guys, because um, we need more females in the trading world. And I want to hear from more of them. So it's awesome to have her be our first guest. Um, a little bit about last week's trades. I do want to jump into TTOO. So this is a bio play COVID diagnosing. We've brought it up multiple shows in a row now. So if you look back, we've got a really beautiful support and floor area that I've mentioned adding at. And we did finally get a nice little jump last week to 123. So a nice 23% move about from our dollar, dollar and one cent floor. Um, what I would do with this play, I mean, 23% is a decent amount in this market. It's been really, it's been really shifty. But as you can see, you know, much like a lot of our stocks, they don't quite hold their gains that well. So I think it's um, super important to make sure you're locking profits. And if you want to enter this play, we can just continue to keep that $1 area as at the floor. And once we get closer to there, add back and just continue riding the waves. Um, another stock that I am interested in, in terms of a low risk, high reward type of play, I do like AESE, um, eSports, eGaming, we know that's big, um, especially you know if we get further shutdowns, you know, we have football season coming up. Um, but I've been sort of adding around that 200 MA, which is currently at about 204, but I'm sort of treating that last dip that we had, the lowest level, about 193 as my floor. So I'm sort of trying to add within that range. And I think it's only a matter of time until we get a nice little pop 
I mean, our last one went up to 271. So another low risk, high reward, good safe play that I am keeping an eye on and accumulating. All of that said, I do want to go ahead and get Brittany Marie on here. If you're joining us, you're excited to see her, go ahead and hit the like button for us. Let's get the likes moving. If you guys have any comments along the way, throw them in the chat. Um, I do want you guys to start thinking about some questions that you have at the end of the show because I'm going to spend about 15 minutes and we'll get those to Brittany and we will just pick her brain and, and learn from her. Um, so with all of that being said, let's welcome Brittany to the stream. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to have you on as my first female guest. I'm really excited. I know. It's exciting. I, I agree with you. I definitely wish for more females to come into the space because I think it's so awesome to see it grow. For the past couple of months, I've seen a lot more females in the space. So that's really, really cool to see. Yeah. I think um, it's exciting every time we get somebody new on. And especially with you because I love your background. I had so much fun talking to you and like learning a little bit more about you and your trading style. And yeah. I do want to dive into that. So give mm -hmm. me give me a little bit about your background. Let's learn about you. I will try to make this short and sweet. So I started trading because of I've just always been the entrepreneur style person. I'm sure everybody who trades really kind of is. I mean, it's that goal to make something more of yourself. And I had actually bought my first house when I was 20 years old and I flipped it. So it was a fixer upper. And I was doing a little bit of wholesaling real estate. I was dabbling with, you know, online fitness boot camps. I've been in the fitness industry for my typical career uh, for about eight to 10 years, I'd say, uh, before I, I really dove, you know, full force into trading. And passion of mine has always been health and fitness. So I will say I, I'm so glad that I'm able to separate that now from passion to career because it's just it put the damper on things when you yeah, when it's all when it's all in one bucket it's it's not as fun anymore no the enjoyment's out of it but you know so basically i was going through the motions of finding ways to make money on the side because i've always been the type of person that you know you can ask my parents they would joke with people they'd say oh she just wants a t-shirt at a job because i just wouldn't very i wouldn't last very long like i just would get that eager you know feeling that i had to go to something else like i had to figure out a way to work for myself because I just, yeah, I just was the overhead having somebody, you know, tell me what to do. I just was never good at that. That's not what I wanted. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. Um, so that ultimately led me to side hustle 101. I just was doing anything and everything. And six years ago, I was in a previous relationship and I walked into his dad's house. He was a very smart man, retired from um, the Air Force, and he was watching the TV, but I always thought he was watching the news. And I realized one day that he was watching Bloomberg. I had seen trading. I really always thought that you had to have a ton of money to trade. So I that didn't really intrigue me because I was like, OK, well, I'm trying to make money from barely anything. How am I even going to start trading? Um, or investing because he had, you know, millions of dollars to invest with. So I do, um, I do feel yeah. like it's a key point that you're bringing mm -hmm. up. Because when I first started trading too, and I was doing well with it, I was like, this kind of feels like a little secret that most people don't know about. Yeah. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. how many people not know? Mm -hmm. And it's always that gap between, you know, you actually have to either know somebody who can sit down with you and show you. Or you have mm -hmm. to see something that's super simple that can fill that gap. So you can be like, OK, that makes sense to me and I could do that. And so I started to pick his brain that night. I you know, he was having his usual drink and we sat down and he just was throwing terms at me that I had no idea what meant, like what they meant. I just was like, what are you talking about? And but that I'm the type of person that that made me so interested. I was like, you're doing what and you're doing this from your laptop and you're you know, you're investing, there's got to be a way, you know, and so then I dove in on YouTube and I found, you know, endless amounts of trading techniques. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, there's just, yeah. there's so, there's so much confusion, but ultimately I landed on penny stocks because I was like, okay, I have a small account. You know, I am good about saving at that point. I was good about saving <laughs> before I was addicted to the stock market. Um, okay. But, you know, so anyways, long story short is that's how I kind of just dove headfirst. I dropped everything I was doing. 
I was solely focused on building my account and learning everything I could. And I'm the type of person that once I put my mindset to something, I will, I won't quit. Laser like, focus. I, yeah, laser focus. And you always, you guys will see my dogs in the back, but okay. laser focus. yeah, there's two of them. One sleeping, thank goodness. Um, but, you know, ultimately that started my journey and I didn't have money for courses. I didn't have money for, you know, to invest in any type of education. So I'm always like a self-taught type of person anyway. Some trial and error along the way. Yeah, lots of trial and error, but I am very stubborn. So, you know, ultimately I made a huge mistake. And I think I kind of touched on that with you is we, so I was trading with my ex at the time and it was, that is where I think I found the love for market psychology and how important it is because bad relationship, you know, we blew a bunch of money. It just, nothing, it, it, nothing was going to work in that situation. And so it's so important to keep, you know, a really clear mindset when you're trading. And that is where I was like, you know what? I get technical analysis. I get trading. I, I know, you know, how to buy and sell stocks. I know what to look for. But I think for me, taking it to the next level was really figuring out the mindset and the psychology behind it and how to deal with my own self, and my own emotions. So Fast forward, and uh, I, I did it for a few years after that up and down roller coaster ride. It was it was exhausting mentally, especially when you're doing it by yourself. Nobody in my family really knew what I was doing. You know, obviously me and him didn't have any connection anymore. So it's tough when you're alone and you don't have anybody any type of like feedback on how you can change things or you know, do you guys think this is a good idea or am I crazy on this stock? You know. And maybe the community thing. like that we have now wasn't as mm -hmm. big when you started. So that yeah. feedback really yeah. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, and that was that was the thing that like why I, I wanted to create a smaller community is because the ones that I did know were really crowded and I felt like I wasn't being heard or I couldn't get any value out of that. You know, free is always awesome, but it's like to a certain extent, just like, you know, fitness industry, you're going to get free workouts, but who's there holding you accountable? No one. Right. So it's it's hard to keep up with it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've had your ups and downs, but you're pretty established in a style now, and you know, mm -hmm. what kind of trades you take. And I know one of your biggest focuses, because you do have your own discord, you, mm -hmm. you went from learning from scratch, basically, even blowing up an account or two. And <laughs> now you actually help guide and you teach a lot of people. And I know one thing that we discussed was that a lot of the people that you teach and guide are actually full-time traders. Yeah. Yeah. And I do want to jump into this because I ran a little poll on my Twitter earlier. And mm -hmm. I asked, do you have a main job or career outside of trading? And if you're in the chat, I want to hear from you as well. If you're a full-time trader, if you're working while trading and our sample size, not that big, a little under 200, but a clear majority of people are working full time. Mm -hmm. And I'm in that boat myself. So I'm always curious about how people are managing it. And so mm -hmm. I asked that question and it was, if you work during the day, how do you tackle your trade? So mm -hmm. we've got some people who are sneaky and try to get in that screen time where they can. Some people who set their orders ahead of time, some people who do both. Um, so I'm excited to hear you know, sort of what your insights, tips, and techniques are to people who are maybe struggling with that, um, taking yeah. on trades, but also trying to focus at work. Yeah, no, that is that is ultimately why I decided to do what I'm doing now is because there was a massive gap between what was available community wise and what was realistic. So, you know, I countless times after times I signed up for groups. And, you know, at that time, I, you know, once I was able to build up my account and afford groups, you know, what I realized is, wow, their strategies require me to be in front of the screen all day, or at least, you know, for a couple hours in the morning, which is really unrealistic if you're working, because right. who's going to let you go in unless you're a bartender at like you know lunchtime or, or 2 p.m. Right. And so, you know, that's where I, I was lucky enough. And so, you know, that is something I purposely did is I switched. Well, one, I've always been good at management. I've been good at multitasking and stuff. So, you know, in the fitness industry, I was tired of being a personal trainer. And so I switched to management. And when I did that, that allowed me to be in front of the screens, but still not full time. I mean, if, if I had a client walk in, you know, if something like that happened, I could be in mid trade. And the next thing I know, I could be gone for an hour. And that was where I was like, you know, day trading is very lucrative if you are over PDT and if you don't work full time. But that is where I found a lot of traders got 
just absolutely demolished when it came to their accounts is because, you know, it's, we talked about this in, in pre, you know, screen here, but it's really fun to follow those traders who have day trading capabilities. It's really fun to jump on those high momentum plays that are super exciting and very volatile, but if you're it's not for everyone, it isn't. And if your situation yeah. is not ideal for you to be able to monitor that play, next thing you know, a couple hours pass by and you look at your phone and you could have gotten hit by an offering. You could have gotten, you know, slammed with the pump and dumps that have been happening so often recently. And so that's ultimately where I was like, you know what? I can do the research. And so I started to do that. I started to be like, okay, how can I find these plays and be patient enough to sit on them? So that way, when they do pop off, I'm in a low enough average where I could go to work and not care, you know, or I could take profits in pre-market or I can have a trailing stop loss. You know, mm -hmm. I was willing to do the work, but there's a lot of work required in being early. So, you know, that was where the gap was needed to be filled. Yeah, I think um, going off of that, like when I first started trading before when I was doing my own thing and just kind of winging mm -hmm. it and had no plan of attack, yeah. that was a mess. But um, I learned a lot from Radio Silent Play and his biggest mm -hmm. trading style is low risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say, like, there's no such thing as low risk. Da, da, da. And I'm like, there is lower risk versus mm -hmm. trying to jump on like the high momentum, yeah. quick flash in the pan kind of moves. Um, and that's why like the plays we discuss, like TTLO, we've mm -hmm. touched on every show because it's like we're at such a clean floor level. So if I'm working full time and I want to be a part of this play, I can set orders I can set limit orders to buy near that floor level. And then at the yeah. same time, I can go ahead and set my sell orders so that when I'm at work, mm -hmm. if I'm in the middle of a big meeting, if I have my boss hovering over me, if I have something going on and I can't dedicate my attention to a screen, mm -hmm. those sell orders are going off for me. And let me tell you, those are the most satisfying notifications to get. So you come back and you're just like, okay, that paid for my lunch and some, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think I, like you said, it, it's key to like find a trading style that you can, you have to be honest with yourself. Like, can mm -hmm. I actually accommodate this trading style mm -hmm. into my schedule? Yeah. And that was where, you know, we talked about this too, is I have the people that do come into the community. You know, I always make recommendations and never like hard line in the sand, you know, statements. I'm saying everybody's different. You know, if you are, because a lot of people are working from home still and they have the flexibility to look at their laptop, which is awesome. And, but again, that's where it comes into play that I think price targets and stuff like that are extremely stupid because if you are, you know, if I set a price target to something that I can watch and it gets hit and you set your limit order and you walk away and you just don't look at it for the rest of the day, you know, was that realistic or should have you been smart because you knew you couldn't watch the screens and, and realistically 20% is fantastic. You know, it just depends on your goals. And I feel like, you know, that's why I tell a lot of traders is, is try to just take all that noise and just do away with it. You know, I am a very strong willed person, but I will admit when I was getting really, really good at trading and my account size was growing, I started to look elsewhere. I started to say, oh, that looks fun. That's out of my norm. But that person called it out and they're successful. So let me try it. But it was a different wheelhouse. And so those shiny objects started to throw me off my game. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh, that was a really bad decision. So well, and I think what you just said right there, that looks fun. Mm -hmm. um, I've mentioned this before, like, yeah, the market's fun sometimes. I'm not going to lie, especially when things are going well. It's fun, especially when you have community and you're all like rooting for like, oh, our yeah. play's taking off. But, you know, the market's also not here for your entertainment. So if you've established a plan, a strategy, and it's working for you, you don't always have to go after the shiny new object. And um, David Morgan here brought up a good point. He said the screen time... Um, so the screen time I put in depends on how busy I am. I make alerts, I set limits. I think you can automate the system and help it work for you. Mm -hmm. And then um, Bill said, buying quality allows you the freedom not to have to stare at the screen all day. Mm -hmm. And I agree with this because I think a lot of time with trading, it's yes, we want the additional money, but mm -hmm. a lot of reasons, a lot of the reason that people are so enticed by trading is because it gives you freedom in a sense. Like, the way to use your time how you like. And so whether you're working full time or not, automating the system to have sell orders and to have buy orders and to get alerts, I think that helps you regardless of what kind of 
career yeah. day job that you have. No, I agree. And and that's a really good point because I want to highlight the fact that I actually had to reevaluate where I was because again, I am I am such an obsessive person with what I do. Is overtraining is absolutely just as bad as you not being able to look at the screens. So Guilty. you know yeah. And so it, it comes down to the fact that is it really freedom if you're watching the screens all day? You know, it, it's not freedom. And so that's where I love the fact they brought up quality is because a little trick that that actually clicked in my brain a while ago is I started to think about this little fact. And I said, because I started to have family members ask me about stocks and it's completely different when your family asks you because then you have a whole new expectation level. Yes. And I, I started to make that rule for myself. I said, you know what? The only things I go heavy in is something that if my mom called me right now and said, name three stocks, that's what I'd give her. I and like so, that. I, yeah, I like to use the family method because you'll hesitate if you don't know, you know, three solid reasons to be in a stock. Because if a family member calls you and say, hey, you know, what's the next good thing? If you hesitate, it's because you're not sure. And so that's where it's like you're just probably trading to fill the time. And um, yeah. that's something, yeah, that I, I have definitely, you know, tried to incorporate because quality over quantity any day, I'm all for that. We can, we can call that the, is it good enough for your mama test? I'm serious. I'm going to have a section for that. It's not good <laughs> enough for your mama that you get to... She might be watching this sooner or later. So, <laughs> is it good for your for your gambling uncle, your gambling crazy uncle? If it's good for him, then maybe you also should be right? consider. Only go in um, half. <laughs> only go in half. Absolutely. Yeah. And you did bring up a good point. I think you had mentioned before something that you tell your group is if there are people that you're following that mm -hmm. have all sorts of different trading styles that mm -hmm. aren't working for you and they're a distraction, consider cleaning up your feet a little bit. Yeah. And again, it's it's not me telling anybody what to do because, you know, that is what I hate. I, I give them ideas to say, hey, is that going to help you out? You know, because you know what I'm talking about. You know, that person that you like, but their plays are left field. And every single time you take one, look at your history on what you did. Like, look, if it's if it's. Yeah. And that's where I found myself is, you know, one of the groups that I ended up attending back in the day. They made money. They had a good strategy. That strategy may have been buying Tesla calls and Tesla just goes up for the past two years. You know, we're not getting into that. But, right. you know, ultimately it was the strategy was extremely risky and it wasn't something that I had the control, like the discipline at that time to even look at. And so the moment that I just took them away mm -hmm. is the moment that I, I was like, OK, I, I'm back. I'm good. You know, but. Good. Seeing those things can really throw you off. Yeah, you got to stay focused. Um, what I do want to dive into next is you have two specific swing trading strategies that you like to yeah. incorporate. So let's tap into that. Okay. First, let's tap into the secondary offerings. If we can pull that up. Perfect. Okay. So secondary offerings are, you know, I think it's one of the easiest things as a beginner. Now, I want to highlight there's risks that come with this because, you know, at the end of the day, if we're trading penny stocks, right, they're not profitable. So, you know, penny stocks get a bad rap for that. The fact that they do offerings and reverse splits all the time, you know, they, right. they typically are not the greatest investment. So one thing that I've realized over the years is as long as you can find certain stocks, you have to look at each stock, though, as an individual. So it's not saying, OK, they had a secondary offering. We're good. Because, you know, certain biotech stocks, they need more offerings. You know, we, we've mentioned EVFM. I like the stock. I like the potential. The company, the, fact, the story. Yeah, the fact that it's they keep pretty. Coming, it isn't. And, you know, sometimes offerings can come with a secondary and a third. You know, it, it's not guaranteed. But, you know, if you can look at a stock and, and you're like, OK, they haven't done an offering in a while. They just did one. It looks like they rebound after a couple of days. You always look left, zoom out and look at the history. Then ultimately you can find something from this screen to give you a lower risk entry. Because in my opinion, the biggest risk factor for penny stocks is an offering, a secondary offering. And, you know, a lot of times I'm sure some of the people in the chat have gotten caught up in an offering blindsided. Um, and that really took a toll on their average. They ended up back holding. Um, but ultimately going through here and sifting. And so in my group, I actually have a whole section dedicated to keeping up with offerings and secondary offerings just to do that work for my members. So if they want to pop in and be like, okay, when's the last time they had an offering? 
If they yeah. haven't had an offering, I always tell them, go look, have they registered for one? Have they filed for one? You know, you need to be aware of your position sizing before, you know, if they haven't have an offering or if they could potentially have one, that's super important. So that's yeah, just, the I think, first, yeah. That's a great way to like take advantage of the big dips. Cause a lot of times with offerings, mm -hmm. there are some major overreactions and some great exactly. opportunities to jump mm -hmm. in. I know, um, did you play go at at all? The appliance company? Oh yeah. I got that one right after the offering and that one was fantastic. And that was just it was beautiful. beautiful. But again, you had to, you, and that was my favorite type of play. And I hate it because I know there's investors who were previously in it that got crushed, but right. if the stock's already down and then it also gets crushed with an offering, I mean, for me, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to probably size in pretty hefty. And, but you can go back and I will say though, I usually only use the past three months max, usually two months. Anything after that, it's kind of irrelevant because penny stocks can do them every two to three months. I mean, there really is no limit to dilution. So you want to pay attention to how often they're doing them. Um, right. But you can sift through these and, and find ones that, okay, now they're at a discount because they had to do an offering to raise capital. I mean, they're not profitable. It's it's known, you know, they, ha they have to do it every now and then. So yeah, sift through them and then just kind of like, I know we just took AEI as a swing. Um, I think that was under $2. And that had been, that was my favorite type is because it had been really hyped up. I believe it was in July. Yeah, let's go to July right there. So it had an offering at 212 and you know, it was 5 million shares. It wasn't anything crazy, but it was on 729. And usually what I'll say is something like this play is I'll usually try to wait two to three days after. So typically two to three to days. To see if there's days. further downside mm -hmm. first. Because that's a big problem that I've seen in the beginning is people will be like, okay, well, the offering was at this price. It shouldn't go much lower, but that's not the case. It does. Sometimes it does. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. And what I've noticed too, is it just depends on the overall sentiment of that stock at the time. You could have something that's really hot, gets an offering and it bounces back within five minutes. You could have, you'll hear my dogs. You could have okay. something. Yeah. You'll have something like AEI though, that looks like you don't want to jump in right away again, unless your dollar cost averaging or you are preparing for more downside but that gap down right there gives you an advantage because look at the last gap down the last gap down we were able to have a rally back up to fill the gap so that makes it more possible in the future and that's something so simple beginners can take advantage of but in what we're seeing right there that gap up or just even that climb up that's mm -hmm. why i also love having sell orders in ahead of time yeah if you're at work when that kind of thing happens i mean look mm -hmm. that's a that red candle like that yeah. day it gave most of its beans back exactly if you have those mm -hmm. sell orders in ahead of time mm -hmm. instead of just trying to stare at the screen and trying to catch the perfect move it's exactly. it's really awesome yeah and and knowing ahead of time your resistance levels but also too having a broker that gives you pre-market trading is is super important because you know a lot of people robin hood is super beginner friendly i agree but you don't know how many times that i've seen members and i i hurt for them that we are all getting out in a pretty significant bounce. And by the time it opens, they're crushed. They can't take advantage of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so, I, I, okay. Go so ahead. offering is your first swing mm -hmm. strategy. What's your second? So the second one is something that I feel like is probably been my biggest winner over the past you know few years and that ultimately has to do with and a lot of traders who are seasoned know this um the longer you're around you become like a human scanner your brain will know what stocks run under what circumstances and if one stock runs the other stock in those sectors who, which one are you going to you know Sympathy and so plays. exactly a lot of people will say well what scanners do you use and i'm like Kind of my brain. Like I've um, become I've been, the human scanner. I have been looking at the screens all day, every day for six years. And, you know, there's people who've been doing it 10 years and obviously they're that good because they know every single market condition. They know what a play looks like under circumstances and how to react very quickly. So for me, I will say my, and I also have this in my group is, and I do it for the members, is if a sector is starting to get very hot, I will automatically alert them on stocks to watch. So this is a very key part for an important reason. So say we're, we're in pre-market, right? And um, let's, let's go think of the, cause this is actually a stock we're going to cover in a little bit, but 
uh, the cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin run, right? Last week, me and you had actually touched on that when we talked. I have a watch list I can throw up for crypto. Yeah. Actually. And so that was what I was prepared for ahead of time. Because again, I preach to my members, you have to be proactive, not reactive. So if you are, yeah, like any SOS, BTBT. So this is a perfect example. It's like, so if we see BTBT running and you're working a full-time job and you're like, oh, this has gone up quite a lot. What can I look at next or what can I look at at a lower price point with a lower risk as a sympathy play that I could take for a swing while I'm at work? And so that's where I come in and and SOS was our personal swing. And we'll, we'll dive into that chart in a little bit. But, you know, ultimately, it's taking the ones that you have a really good, strong feeling that are going to react from that head dog. So I always say head dog, figure out which one that is, pay attention to its movement and then don't chase that one because if you can't watch the screens, you're screwed. And then you go to sympathy plays. So that's, that's always been my, like when GameStop ran naked in AKD, I was on that one at 38 cents. I remember that like it was yesterday. I didn't have a group by then, but I wish I did because it ran to $3 and that was an insane play that I was able to capitalize on. But also I want to highlight the importance of you also learn when to go really heavy based off of what you've seen and then when to dial it back. So, you know, if it's just like a no brainer, like everything lines up, like in a KD off GameStop, I went in extremely heavy. If it's something that you're like, okay, that looks familiar, but it it doesn't give me all of the things that I, I would like to really go in with size and scale it back, you know, and that's, that's where it comes in. So guys, if you're tuning in, we just discussed two of the key swing trading strategies that Brittany likes to use. And one is going after the offering plays, the second offering specifically, and taking advantage of those deep dips. And then the second one is going after sympathy plays when the sector is hot and it's running and kind of taking a look at maybe what hasn't ran yet, um, what plays typically run together. And I think, I know you mentioned you've become a bit of like a human scanner and you have a good sense of, you know, the plays and the market and what's about to come, what's happening. Mm -hmm. But for people who haven't really quite established that or haven't traded as long, um, I think watch lists are just an amazing critical place to start because if you Mm -hmm. have a watch list set up for each category, each theme, whether it's cannabis stocks Mm -hmm. or crypto or energy, um, throw an ETF in there, throw a few plays in there Mm -hmm. and just always be on the lookout for what's going to run next and what likes to run yeah. together. Yeah. And we can actually pull up Finviz if we want to do that. And I can show you guys really quick because I'm a big component of like, I don't want to show you fish. I want to teach you how to fish. I want everyone to be able to contribute ideas themselves. I don't ever want them to feel like they're relying on me. So if you go to Finviz and you can, you can, this is a free scanner. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about this. If you don't, um, this is something I would highly recommend taking advantage of because it's free. Um, but you can go in and you can just change so many things. But what I want to highlight is you can change things like sector and you can change things like industry. So if you go in and you mess with this, you can then try to narrow down <clears throat> what industry you're looking at or what sector you're looking at. And then once you do that, and we don't have to do anything specific today, but you know, it gives you the option to try to narrow that down because a lot of times I do have that question. Well, how do you find sympathy plays? But I also want to take it a step further and you can go to price right here. You can change the price to fit your criteria of what you you can afford to trade. And then also, I really want to highlight the fact that float. So you you want to pay attention to float right here and and shares outstanding. You don't want to be trading something that has a massive float. And I'm going to highlight this because I know a lot of people got burned by this, but SNDL You know, I think we all know the marijuana stock that has a insane one billion or whatever it is. Huge. And it's the one everyone seems to talk about all the time. I'm like, there's other plays out there. And that's the problem is it's because, yes, it it, in the previous in the past, it used to run. But newsflash dilution happened. And now that stock to take it back to that level, which unfortunately I know people who are bag holding it is going to take a lot more. So make sure you're paying attention to float, you know, or shares outstanding and you want to find something that is lower flow. I will say typically for me, you know, I like under 50 million, but I'll usually set it at 100 and then kind of work my way down to narrow things down. So that's a good place for newbies to start or beginners. 
um, just kind of sift through that. You can also go through your your float. What is short? So how many you know people are trying to short the stock, which we all know you know due to GameStop and things like that. High short interest can help propel if we do see a move. So so many options here you can even go as far to go through through fundamentals and technical you can go through a setup there's just tons of options i highly recommend taking your time to go through it uh, but this will allow you for free to find your own place absolutely yeah i think that's great because sometimes it's like we have if we've been trading long enough or trading certain stocks long enough we can mm -hmm. kind of come up with those watch lists from scratch mm -hmm. like oh i know we're talking cannabis we have mm -hmm. IGC. Yes, we have ACB, we have Tilray, mm -hmm. we have Sundial, if you're into Sundial. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't really know that much about that sector. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we're in hurricane season and we have this coming up, like, what are some good energy plays? What are some yeah. good... And Finbus is great because you just you sort of tinker with it and you start to build mm -hmm. your own watch list and you're not relying on, mm -hmm. you know, looking to other people who are posting the plays once they're starting to take off. This way you can exactly. be ahead of the game and be prepared. Oh yeah, I'm um, all prepared. <laughs> so I wanna dive into, you know, current market sentiment a little bit. Mm -hmm. The market's been a little shifty for most, I would say since mm -hmm. probably February. Like I know mm -hmm. a lot of small caps, I love small caps. Um, I think you're a fan of them too. Same. Um, mm -hmm. Have been very inconsistent. You know, you get gains for a couple days and then they're wiped out. What do you recommend for anybody who is looking to sort of hedge their portfolio against yeah. the market uncertainty that we're seeing? Yeah. So this is something that I feel like has become extremely important. And, you know, I had to, there's, there's a couple of people in my group who I love to death, but you know, there are people who are very emotional traders and it sucks because they came back into the market when all of the hype from things that were just running right and left at the beginning of the year, it is really hard right now to consistently get 10% per week, depending on, you know, what you're swing trading. Um, no levels are holding, you know, and this is why it's important. You have to adapt, you know, no matter what you were doing last year or the week before, you have to be able to adapt to the market. And ultimately speaking, you know, using spy puts to hedge has been something that is extremely important that I've been trying to teach, you know, people who have no idea about options, I'm like, just learn enough. So that way, when the market's bleeding, and you're sitting there and you are, you know, very depressed, looking at your portfolio, you have the opportunity to make money to offset those red days. And so that's something as simple as, you know, we can pull up, let's see, we can do, I think I'm in my screen, screen sharing, can you guys see this? We've got your screen up. Okay, you got my screen up? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So let's go look at SPY really quick, and I want to show you guys something. So obviously, market sentiment right now, it's very tough because we are at all-time highs. So I have noticed that the risk on penny stocks, is summer months are slow, but when it comes to penny stocks, we tend to dive down before the market overall market direction like SPY dives down. So if the penny stocks start to dive down and you're looking like, oh, I think we might have another dip or something along those lines, what you can do is just go buy, you know, not a lot. I, I always say a hedge is like insurance. So if you're going to I buy like a that. Stock, yeah, it really is. It's like, you know, if you think you're going to wreck your car, you're, you, you only want insurance for the, the point that you think you're in the most volatile space. You don't want to pay for insurance the entire time that you're, you know, wherever you're at. Say you're visiting a foreign country and, you know, you're, you're there for seven days and it's extremely risky. You only want the, the hedge or the put for seven days. You don't want to pay for insurance longer than you have to. Um, so a spy put like this right here, we caught this downside on a spy put and it paid, I mean, it completely depends on what contract you buy and how far out you go. But I can honestly say you could have gotten anywhere to three to 500% on these calls. And that's me being modest because I ended up at least 700% return on this downside right here playing puts. Um, and so that's something the crazy thing, I'm sorry is, to interrupt about options yeah. to me because I'm very, very, very new to options. I, in the process of learning them, have been like, this is so overwhelming. I don't 
get it. I need something to simplify it. So what I've been doing um, lately is I've been sort of playing with um, what I call I don't care money. Mm -hmm. And I've been tinkering with calls and puts. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the cool thing about options to me is that you can put forward a smaller amount of capital and the returns that you can see are significant. And it's not all yeah. sunshine and rainbows because mm-hmm. options can expire worthless. You, whatever you put up, you mm-hmm. could possibly just be willing to lose mm-hmm. it all. But I mean, the the percentage that you can get back, especially with the kind of market we've seen with like small caps, yeah. it's it's like you feel like you're holding out three weeks for a fifteen percent gain, and then with the options, it's like fifteen percent. Yeah, and that's the thing that I highlight is a lot of times there is a ton of learning that goes into options and a ton of discipline. So what I always recommend is I'm like just do either a a separate account or b we've we've you know we'll touch on this is using the on demand feature with Thinkorswim. So if you go and I'm not going to bring it up because it, it is very you know time consuming on the laptop it, it might crash my laptop here but. Um, if you go on on demand with Thinkorswim and you switch to their practice mode and you go back to when we did have that dip on SPY and you hypothetically speaking, obviously, you know, if we could all know the future, we'd be really rich. But if you could just say, OK, well, what would have happened if I would have bought one put? You know, what would have happened if I would have bought one put maybe expiring that next Friday? We were we were in a Friday going into the weekend. I remember that we started to have red. You started to see the market drop. And, you know, you're like, ah, crap, I'm holding a ton of stocks right now that are all red. Is is there any way that I could make money off of this? And absolutely, yes. So go back and and practice on on on-demand buying a a put option contract and see with the different expiration dates and the different strike prices, what would have happened. And for me, making, you know, not making, but, you know, advising my members to say, just go do that because it's fake money. It takes all of the anxiety out of it because a lot of times it's just the anxiety of not being able to go from trading stocks to options because they're terrified of all of the stories they heard, which there is a lot of volatility, premiums, theta, time decay. 100%. Yeah. But last point there is, is one thing that I, I tell them to do is if you are going to buy to hedge overnight, which is something that we do, you know, we, I am a big fan of buying towards close and selling at open. So what that means is you're not holding for very long. So you're protecting yourself on overnight because if you've noticed the past couple drops we've had overnight, it it's like the blink of an eye. We have dropped back and we're like, what happened? Um, so if you can just wait until close, you know, about usually within the last 30 minutes, if you're kind of getting that feeling that you're scared for your portfolio, then maybe buy a put to hedge. If the next morning we open up above a support level, you're fine. You sell, you know, time decay may have eaten at your premium a little bit, but it's nothing drastic. So that's kind of the route. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that's great feedback because I know like I know a lot of people who are interested in options, but they just don't know where the heck to begin. And a lot of them, their portfolio has been beaten down a little bit over the course of the last year. So it's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to throw money into something I don't understand and lose even more of it. So on demand by Thinkorswim. So that's mm-hmm. an opportunity to get in there, tinker with monopoly money, and just get a feel for how things move because yeah. the way options move are very different, much faster mm-hmm. in my experience so far yeah. than the way you know commons do. Um, yeah. With that said, I want you guys, if you're in the chat, if you're tuned in right now, um, hit the like button and I want you to start shooting us some questions in the live chat mm-hmm. because we have a little bit left to the show. We're going to jump on to Brittany's top three stocks going into next week. And I want to get some questions in the feed so that we can tackle those next. So with that said, Brittany, let's discuss your top three that's on your watch list for next week. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to switch over. Let me know if you guys can see the stock charts. Can you see it? There we go. Okay, Perfect. Um, so the first one that we're going to go over is one that I want to right off the bat say is super risky. Um, yes, this has a short report from Hindenburg Research. Yes, there is a lot of speculation that it could be fraud. Um, personally, for me, I like to buy stocks like that because oftentimes they end up just brushing it off. Um, 
we can look at really quick, we can look at, um, let's look at this. This was one that had a short report on it, Invis. Um, Hindenburg did a research report on this one. This is now at $15. So, you know, for me, I, I pay attention to the short reports, but I like the beaten down, you know, that comes after. So ultimately, this is a play that we have been in um, since last week. And this was our opportunity to capitalize if Bitcoin ended up breaking up back above 40 to 41,000. So ultimately last week, Bitcoin ended you know, above that. It, it rallied, it had a fantastic day. So this is where it comes into play, knowing the stocks that you can trade with a small account that'll give you that lower risk to higher reward ratio. Um, so ultimately we are still in leaps like leap calls. I mean, they're, they're technically not leaps. They're only about five or six months away. Um, but ultimately I'm looking for as long as we can break above this 50 day moving average of 317, I'm thinking we can get some momentum back. We can do this little gap fill here around 360 and then hopefully make our way back up to the 200 day moving average at 368. I think this one has a lot of potential. Um, not only just because, you know, it's it is more of a shorted down name, um, but also I have seen some really intriguing open interest on this name. So we'll switch over really quick. Can you see my thinkorswim? Uh-huh. Okay, perfect. So we're going to switch over really quick. And I want to show you guys what I was, I have been noticing this for quite a while and that is that SOS on 820 has had somebody who is super bullish on the open interest side in calls. And this isn't always obviously 100%. You can have somebody with open interest and it could be several different situations. But, you know, it does catch my eye. I have noticed, um, you know, quite significant open interest for a while. It doesn't look like any of the contracts have been sold, especially with the rally this past Friday. Uh, and it really starts to ramp up around that four and five dollar mark, as you can see, thirty eight thousand contracts here. And then so, you can go. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, you never use open interest as a one and only reason to buy into yes. a stock, but it can be a supporting reason if everything else is sort of falling in line. Yeah. So if you remember when I said earlier, you know, if you're going to tell your mom, you need multiple good reasons, right? So that is one good reason, but you know, it's not the tell all obviously with Bitcoin over 41,000, that was a second reason for me. Um, I started to go a little bit further out just to see if it was just 820 or if we had, you know, multiple, like this is where I have a position, but you can see right here, we have really heavy open interest going from five all the way to 1250. I mean, we're talking 50, 80, you know, 120,000, 100, like there's a lot of open interest on call contracts, which really caught my eye. Um, that was, you know, something, not only that, but it's a crypto play, obviously that has been beaten down. It has a lot of upside potential if it starts to get going. So that'll be my first play that we are currently already in stock and calls. Um, anytime, yeah, anytime I go penny stock calls, I go as far out as I possibly can because they are so extremely unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And then let's go next, my dog blue. Go. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Um, I know we've been having hot crypto weekends again, which mm -hmm. is so nice because it had been, I remember there was a time period where every single weekend was just like, yeah, Bitcoin's mm -hmm. running again. I was posting new all time highs like, four times a day at one point in yeah. my life. And so it it's a little bit refreshing to mm -hmm. get some of that into the weekends again. And yeah. it's always been a question of like, wait, you know, will that continue into Monday? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and that's the gamble. You know, I had people in my group who, again, we were up on these leap calls. And, you know, that's where I'm like, you have to make that decision. Because in what I've always said is if you don't sell, you don't profit. If you do not right. sell your position, there is no profits to be had. You cannot count those. They they don't count. Um, and so it, let's go to the second one because I know we're, we're running a little bit here. So we'll go to the second one that I'm looking at. And so I'm going to go small to mid cap. So okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at body and I'm, I'm going to use this one because of my background in the health and fitness industry. Um, I have a member in my group who is obsessed with Peloton, so he might not like me saying this too much, but um, you know, body for me, there's a couple different angles here. Uh, body one has earnings on Thursday, the 12th. 
And they also are a mixture of several different components of fitness. I will say this right up front, any fitness industry brand that can last for over five years, they've lasted for 20 years is something that you need to pay attention to. Um, but Beachbody- Because there's demand, a lot of fads, right? Yeah. In that industry. Yeah. It is, it's ton of, it's it's just filled with fads. Um, anything that can last over five years, in my opinion, has potential and they have lasted over 20. So that is something that really intrigued me when I saw them, um, you know, doing a SPAC and, and having an IPO on the market. I was really intrigued. I will say, that SPACs in general right now, due to the overall sentiment of more of a fear index, SPACs in general have gotten demolished. We all have seen that with Lucid. We've all seen it with Fubo. We've all seen it with the several different SPACs that have come out. Their sentiment has overall been down. So for me, I think that was part of the reason that we have had this level off. We had a really good support level at $10, as you can see, super volatile, but we did have a drop off here. So what I want to highlight is they did have 3 million subscribers last time I checked. Um, their advisors are Shaquille O'Neal, so they've got some backing on celebrities. Solid. Yeah, LeBron James, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, the ex-CEO of TikTok is also an advisor, Kevin Mayer. And then Majority Stake in Company Ladder is what they sold. So they are, they're a nutrition company. They also recently, or they also had combined with Mix. And Mix will be their key entry to compete with Peloton. So Mix is a, I would say, a cheaper version of what people could do with Peloton indoor cycling. And they beat them out. I want to say I've seen some estimates between $600 to $1,000 cheaper. So wow. for me, yeah, for me, what I'm thinking is, you know, don't get me wrong. I am not a fan of fads. I hate fads in the fitness industry. I am not a fan of all day high intensity. But I will say with cases in, you know, rising back up with the Delta, you know, it, it, I do it see people's home. fear. Yeah, I've, I see people's fear that are fitness driven saying I need to make sure that I have something not only in a gym, but at home. So I have seen the hybrid becoming more common. And I think of Beachbody as like the Planet Fitness. I personally despise Planet Fitness, but I have to go to them because they're the only one around me right now. Um, right. So it becomes it becomes a convenience and cheap factor. So I think. Well, that, and yeah, I'm sorry, but bringing up like the Delta variant, I mean, mm -hmm. I I was very big on Orange Theory Fitness for a long time. That was my like. <laughs> I'm with a group. I've yeah. got my weight, and I've got my cardio. It's a nice mix. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when the pandemic happened, I had to go get weights and mm -hmm. there were literally no weights on the market. Like on eBay, they were marked up times five. Yeah. I hustled to get like the proper set of weights so I could do things mm -hmm. at home. Um, I love the idea of the Peloton. I've just never been into biking, but yeah. I definitely think with, you know, potential shutdowns looming again, or mm -hmm. maybe you could go back to the gym, but you have to wear a mask. That's not fun. Yeah. I don't want to sweat and breathe and do all that. I'd rather work out at home. So I think that's a good. And yeah, it, it too, what I would say is I think people underestimate the fact that one, it's a stay at home play. You know, for me, what I have been looking for right now for our group for longer term options plays is, okay, how else can we position ourselves? God forbid, if we did end up going into another lockdown or if that mm -hmm. become, you know, more prevalent, you know, what can we look at to that's not Zoom or, you know, Teladoc or something? I love those plays short term, but you're looking at a different price point for people who have smaller accounts. And you're also looking at a lot more volatility there. So, you know, for me, I think Beachbody does have an advantage and a way to come into the market with their established name, you know, that and they are very well rounded. So somebody who like Peloton is very focused. Beachbody does have multiple angles between nutrition at home fitness and now mix, which could put them in competition with beach bar with uh, Peloton. Perfect. So yeah. I do want to, um, you have a time for some Q and a, I do uh -huh. want to jump into that. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a couple of questions over here. This is a good one. So somebody's asking, what would you recommend for someone's first options trade? Mm -hmm. So first options trade, like I covered before is I would, I would almost challenge you to think of what what would you want to be your first options trade? Like once you do some research behind that, whether it's YouTube videos and finding some money you like and getting a sense of, of what it is. Because in reality, you are using leverage to trade larger cap stocks. 
but you also have to pay attention to time decay, which throws a bunch of different factors in there. So I love I, the I, dog. I don't mean to interrupt you, but your dog is just smiling in the frame, and I see these beautiful pearly whites. So, so hi, buddy. I'm petting him so he won't freak out. He is husky and very vocal. Um, so, you know, with the first options trade, I would say something like spy would be a good thing to start with because you do have traditionally speaking consistency when it comes to how it reacts to certain support levels and resistance levels. Whereas if you trade something like Tesla, you're going to be way off the wall. I mean, you know, you want to find something that is pretty consistent and respects its support and resistance levels. Um, and then I would ultimately get that idea and then go trade it with fake money on on demand with thinkorswim even if you don't have an account you don't want to fund it just open up an account just to use their software because it's it's very it's very nice to trade with fake money and lose it versus the other route so that well, was the, the other side of that i think is there's some people who are just mentally wired that if it's not their actual money they're like i can't learn with monopoly money like i need it to yeah. be real money what i would recommend there because i can be a little bit like that Mm -hmm. is play with I don't care money. Play yeah. with the kind of money that if you knew you were going to lose, you would be okay with, you would survive. You're not depending on it for rent the next day. Um, and that's just a really good way. Like if you, some people actually have to lose their money or make money to feel like they're learning the lesson. Yeah. I'm um, the same way. And I would say too with that is create a separate account. So if you if you are already in the groove, create a separate account. I mean, technically Robinhood's fine for options. I, I usually recommend that if you're just trading options, you don't need pre-market capabilities. So you know, if you were to create a separate account for just options, I recommend you know a hundred dollars. Just start there, and then once you get the hang of it, put fifty dollars in every now and then. Start to build it slowly, and that way you protect your your ego from saying, "Oh, I got this off of one trade," and and go from there. Because beginner's luck is a thing in options. I will tell you that. One of my first trades I took was my friend suggested BTBT, and I got mm -hmm. one contract. Um, it's way further out. It was for $10, $10 calls. One single contract, it's up over 700%. And then you're like, crap, I should have threw my whole account in there. <laughs> right. But I only have one contract, but it's like, all right you know, settle down. It's not always mm -hmm. going to be like that. You're going to lose too. And you just can't hold out for that expectation. So um, I do have time for just one more question before we wrap up. We've only got another minute or two, but which are your favorite indicators that work best for you? What are your go-tos? Yeah. So ultimately it depends on what I'm trading. You know, if you are swing trading, you're going to be looking more of like a bigger picture aspect. So we'll go that route first. I use, I'm super simple. I'm not somebody who crowds my charts with a bunch of technical indicators. Um, I will use the 50 day moving average, the 200 day moving average and the 21 day EMA. So I like to have a mixture. EMA just will adapt quicker to recent moves. And, um, if I'm day trading or scalping, I'll look at things like VWAP and I will maybe close that EMA down to like a nine or four day EMA. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I believe in keeping it simple. I think, oh, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of charts out there that are very noisy and I get overwhelmed trying to digest it all. And I have to remind myself, just do what works for you. You don't have to have exactly. everything in your toolbox. My anxiety cannot take all those lines. I'm like, oh, nope. I keep it separate. <laughs> nope. Um, but this has been amazing. You have been an awesome, awesome, awesome first great guest in general. But I'm, like I said, I'm stoked to have a female guest on finally, especially one that's just, pardon my French, knows her shit like you do. Like you are very versatile. Um, you're well versed. Your strategies are dynamic. And I know I've learned a lot from you. And I think that our audience has as well. So I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been so um, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, this has been great. Guys, um, hit the like button for Brittany. We do have all of her links in the description below. So make sure you're following her. She does have a Discord if you're interested. And yeah, we'll, we'll get you on some other time. Great to see you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, this was episode five of Mind Money Method. Loved having Brittany on. Learned a ton from her. If you're still tuned in, I want you to go ahead and hit the like button for us, get those likes up, and leave a comment in the chat. Um, in the chat or actually in the comments of the YouTube section. What I really wanna know 
is future episodes, you know, what are you guys interested in having covered? It can be very specific questions, it can be general topics, but I wanna know what you guys are interested in. I wanna know who you wanna hear from. So leave a comment in the YouTube comment section below and I will see you guys next week. Take care.